Managers of a nuclear waste reprocessing facility northeast of Tokyo are trying to get operations going again. They haven't been able to restart because regulators tightened safety standards following the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. But they seem to have made a successful appeal for an exception. NHK World's Noriko Okada reports. The nuclear fuel cycle engineering laboratories is located in Ibaraki Prefecture, about 100 kilometers northeast of Tokyo. Workers with the Japan Atomic Energy Agency operate the facility. 3.5 cubic meters of solutions containing plutonium and 400 cubic meters of highly radioactive liquid waste are stored on site. The work to process the liquid into a less volatile solid form was suspended in 2007. And managers haven't been able to restart it because of the impact of the nuclear accident in Fukushima. But they worried about what would happen if they waited any longer. They followed the events earlier this year at the former nuclear production facility in the U.S. state of Washington nuclear waste may have leaked. Officials with the Japan Atomic Energy Agency asked regulators to allow them to start reprocessing again. The facility hasn't passed the new, more rigorous screening process, but the Nuclear Regulation Authority is expected to make an exception. Keeping the radioactive waste in liquid form is highly risky, so generally speaking, turning the waste into solid substances may help reduce the risk. But even once workers start reprocessing again, they may have to stop in the future. Space to store the waste on site will run out. Managers may have to figure out a temporary solution. A government decision to choose a final disposal site for nuclear waste in Japan is likely a long way off. Cleaning up after the 2011 tsunami in northeastern Japan has been a major undertaking, but now officials at Japan's Environment Ministry say almost 90 percent of the debris has been disposed of. The officials estimate the disaster generated more than 16 million tons of debris in Iwate, Miyagi and Fukushima prefectures. They say by the end of October, workers had disposed of 94 percent of the rubble in Miyagi and 86 percent in Iwate. In Fukushima, workers had gotten rid of 59 percent of the debris, except in evacuation zones near the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Workers in Miyagi and Iwate expect to remove all of the rubble by the end of March. Officials in Miyagi say nearly 5,000 people have worked on the cleanup project. Many are elderly and survivors of the disaster. The prefecture will face a task of having to find new jobs for the workers once the cleanup work is complete. The number complete. of dementia patients worldwide is expected to rise along with the growing segment of elderly citizens. Alzheimer's Disease International estimates that more than 44 million people around the world are currently suffering from the condition. The figure is forecast to exceed 135 million by 2050. Health ministers from the group of eight nations gathered for the first dementia summit. And the number is counting. And every 20 years, the number doubles. And on that, let me once again commend the leadership of the G8 countries. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. 
The summit opened in London on Wednesday. The ministers were accompanied by researchers and officials from the World Health Organization and pharmaceutical companies. Participants reported on support programs for dementia patients and their families in order to promote discussion on ways to improve them. They also talked about how to financially support research and development of drugs to control the disease. Japan's senior vice minister of health, Shinako Tsuchiya, said the country has been focusing on early diagnosis so that patients can continue to live in a comfortable setting. Following the massive earthquake of 2011, the problem for survivors was securing water. Many people in northeastern Japan found themselves without tap water. This is ringing alarm bells for people around the country, and they're taking steps to make sure it doesn't happen to them too. Inishia World's Asami Terada has more. Miyagi Prefecture was one of the area was hit by the massive earthquake in 2011. Many areas were left without running water. Koji Adachi said the water supply to his house was cut off for six days. He survived thanks to this well. This really is the water of life. It helped me survive. People throughout the country should know how useful it is to have a well that can supply water. A National Association of Well Drillers says it's inspected around 240 wells in northeast Japan after the disaster and found all of them continue to supply water. A growing number of people are recognizing the advantage of having a traditional well. Recently, this specialist was commissioned to dig a well in the garden of a house in Kamakura, a city just south of Tokyo. He has been receiving orders from all around Japan. I dug a well in Fukushima last week. After this, I'm doing one in Tokyo. I'm working every day. I'm exhausted. This hospital in Kochi Prefecture, Western Japan, has also recognized the need to have its own source of fresh water. Every day, it uses 350 tons of water for cleaning surgical implements and for kidney dialysis. If the water supply were to be cut off, it would pose major problems. So, it had a test well dug. By March, the wells should be able to deliver 600 tons of water a day, if there's an emergency. For a hospital, the situation would be critical if we lost our water supply. Judging from recent disasters, water is even more important than electricity. We realized that water is essential for life. But not all well water is created equal. In some places, it's not drinkable. And following an earthquake, it could be contaminated by soil and sand. That's a business opportunity for companies making high-performance water purifiers. This compact model is portable. It purifies water instantly. 
even if it had a red ink added to it. It can treat enough water in a day for 400 adults. The biggest problem after a disaster is always finding good water. We hope our water purifier can help ensure survivors have a safe source of drinking water. In the past, waste was a daily source of water for people throughout Japan. Now, their value is being recognized again as a lifeline in the event of a disaster. Japan is heading into winter without any of its nuclear reactors generating energy. This hasn't happened since a crisis began nearly three years ago at the power plant in Fukushima. Government officials are calling on households and businesses to use electricity sensibly. People in northern areas are taking conservation a step further. NHK World's Yumi Nakamura explains. The biggest city on Japan's northern island of Hokkaido shines during the cold, dark months of winter. Residents and tourists have been flocking to the Sapporo White Illumination for more than three decades. It's beautiful, yeah, it's nice. I really look forward to this event every year. <laughs> and the lights are everywhere, 400,000 of them most now low wattage LEDs. The organizers of this event are aware that all of this requires a lot of energy. So they're using five generators to run more than half of the lights. They say it's about 30% more expensive than using conventional electricity. The generators run on biodiesel. Organizers have set up collection points for used cooking oil. They say efforts such as this have helped cut total power consumption by 83% compared to last year. We'll try to keep this event going by being eco-conscious. Japanese have been concerned about their power supply since the 2011 disaster at the nuclear plant in Fukushima. The crisis led to 10 days of rolling blackouts affecting 30 million households and offices. All of the country's 50 commercial reactors are offline and won't go back online until they pass new safety checks. Utility managers have been making do by firing up thermal and hydro generators. Still, they're urging people to conserve because they expect power reserves to dip to dangerous lows this winter especially in Hokkaido. The grid connecting Hokkaido and the Tohoku region offers the lowest amount of energy compared to other lines. If supplies dwindled, replenishing them would take time. So utilities and government officials have started an energy conservation campaign for winter. This year, we are expecting severe cold weather. We need to have multiple prevention measures in place in case of power station failure. One of those measures involves requiring their most energy-hungry clients to cut consumption. The utility offers rate reductions, and in return, the high-demand users must save electricity. More and more of those users have been installing something called a demand monitor to track their energy consumption. It advises people to switch off electronic devices when power consumption rises above a set limit. We believe we are responsible for cutting our electricity usage as much as possible. It can also contribute to cost reduction. The coldest part of winter is just around the corner, in Hokkaido, the coldest region of Japan. Utility managers and government officials believe they can avoid a power crunch and keep the lights on. But they say everyone needs to do their part.